In the previous videos, we've seen how the Oboe library makes it easy to play low latency audio, but what if you need to record audio? In this video, I'll show you how to set up low latency streams for recording. Recording audio is done in much the same way as playing audio. The main difference is that our audio stream moves data from an audio device, for example the built-in microphone, rather than sending data to it. Before creating an input audio stream, you'll need to make sure that your app has acquired the record audio permission. To create the input audio stream, we use an audio stream builder, setting stream direction to input and the performance mode to low latency. Now we can open the stream by passing a reference to an audio stream pointer. After checking that it opened successfully, you can start the stream. Data from the default recording device will start moving into the stream. There are two ways we can read this data, either directly or using a callback. It's possible to obtain the lowest latency using both approaches. I'll demonstrate how to read directly from the stream since the callback method was covered in the previous video. The method we need is unsurprisingly called read. It takes three parameters. Buffer is an array into which the audio data will be read. Num frames is the number of audio frames to read and timeout nanoseconds is the maximum number of nanoseconds which the method will block for. If you specify zero here, the method will return immediately, copying only the data that was currently available in the stream's buffer. This is useful if you don't want to block the current thread. So, let's say we wanted to read two milliseconds of audio data from a 16-bit mono audio stream. We can do this using a blocking read. Start by creating an array to store the frames of audio. The amount of data we need to store will depend on the stream's sample rate. The timeout should be longer than the amount of audio we want to read. In this case, we'll use 3 milliseconds and convert it to nanoseconds. Incidentally, Oboe provides a number of useful constants for working with different time units. Before we can read from our stream, we need to clear out any stale data which might already be in the stream's buffer. To do this, we just perform non-blocking reads of the whole buffer until it's empty. Now, when we read from the stream, we know we're reading the most current audio data. After read is completed, we need to check the result. If it was OK, then result.value will contain the number of frames which were copied into our buffer. To read more data, surround this block in a while loop. This approach allows us to process small buffers of up-to-date audio data for processing and moving elsewhere. After we're done, we must close the stream and after a stream has been closed, it can no longer be accessed. This is a very simple example of how to record audio. For more complex examples, including how to implement synchronous recording and playback, check out the live effects sample on GitHub. You can also check out the other videos in this series. The first video is an introduction to Oboe and shows why low latency audio is important. And the second video shows you how to create low latency audio streams for playing sound. That's all for now. If you have any questions, issues, or feature requests, please post them in the issues section of the Oboe GitHub site. We'd really love to hear from you. Good luck, and go make some noise.